Hello, this is Si Wing Yi from the Yi Release Network. And today's video, we're going to go over the housing update for August for San Diego, California. I'm using, as you know, the Redfin Data Center, and I will sh uh, share with you uh, what are my analysis of the details of the numbers. All right. So, uh, just so you know, if you follow my channel, I've been, I have gone over several cities in the past few weeks, and I'm, I'm doing San Diego today. I, I will come back to San Diego maybe you know a couple of months later, perhaps the next quarter to see what, what has transpired. Uh, since then, so uh, so I can give you some real time data of what's going on with the housing market on from all numerical aspects of it. I will share with you some of my thoughts as well in terms of uh, what are, what are my uh, projections, what are my what I think about the future of the San Diego market as well as other markets. So so uh, just stay tuned and uh, you know over the net order in a foreseeable future, I'm gonna go over many, many cities, many metros throughout the US, mainly in the West, in a, in a mid, uh, Midwest and the South and Southeast. Uh, all the uh, relevant markets, you know, all the uh, exciting markets, if you will, housing markets for potential home buyers to, uh, to get informed, to get educated about what's going on and for real estate investors. So, what, whatever you want to do, if you are a primary home buyer, a own occupied buyer, you need this kind of ongoing real time data so you can determine what's best for you in terms of making a decision to move to wherever you want to move or uh, to uh, understand your current market. Even if you're living in your current market for a long, long time, it's curious. I'm sure you're curious to know what's going on with the local market that you're in as well. As for real estate investors, uh, uh, you uh, as you looking at the possibility of invest in certain markets, you need to understand the numbers, the the other economic metrics that you need to understand to make an informed decision to buy investment properties in a particular area. So I'll cover all those kind of areas. Just so you know, over the years I've been doing for twenty years, uh, I have helped many thousands of real estate investors, mostly from California, the Bay Area, where I live for the past 32 years. We take California investors to buy out of state, to buy in affordable markets, whereby we did put down 25% down payment, typically, we can get financing, even at the current return, uh, current interest rate, uh, to determine whether they can cash flow initially or down the road. All right, thank you so much. And without further ado, let's, uh, Let's, let's do this. All right, so the first thing I want to cover is the uh, the big picture of what's going on. Again, I'm not a local realtor. Uh, although I'm, uh, I'm a California licensed real estate broker, I'm not a realtor per se, but I have a network of realtors located throughout the country because we have, I have taken our investors to uh, many different markets, like I said, to buy investment properties over the years. But uh, currently we're targeting the South and Southeast for the simple fact that in these markets, the numbers make sense. The rent to value ratio really makes sense. The cap rate, cash on cash return, everything makes sense in South and Southeast and to a lesser extent in the Midwest as well. So let's focus on San Diego for the time being. Uh, so let's go over the last three years of uh, real estate appreciation. So if you look at uh, August, the seventh this year, the median price listed is 826K. And then when we started the year 2019 with a, a mere 586,000 medium sales price. So if you fast forward three years since the pandemic from 581, the price has increased all the way to 826. That is mind-boggling increase. There's a what we call a record-breaking, skyrocketing home appreciation prices. But in fact, if you if you look at the 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 May these past May 22, 22 metrics, you will see it peaked at 880k, 
now a few months later, because of the rising interest rate, uh, the median price is 826, which is very, very significant. So for those of you owner occupied buyers that that uh, had the worth of the purchase in the past couple of years, you uh, you you made a lot of money, right? You have achieved tremendous amount of wealth and equity just by buying at least one property, whether as an unoccupied or whether as an investment property. Either way, uh, congratulate to you and the rest of you who's on, on the sideline that are waiting, waiting for the right time to buy. You can't really time the market, right? And 20 years of uh, real estate consulting tells me that that's pretty much the case. You, uh, regardless, you have to buy invest for the long term, at least seven to 10 years or more in order to see the uh, the long-term wealth, wealth you can create for yourself. So from 20, 2019 to 2020, not more, 10% appreciation during that time, right? As the pandemic has begun, then from 2020 to 2021, yeah, the, the home prices appreciate on the average in the San Diego market, a whopping, Stratosphere, 19% appreciation year over year. Then from 2021 uh, to 2022 this year, this month, from 763 to 838. So 10% appreciation plus 19, that's 29. So uh, plus 11. So that's 39. I mean, on the average, like 40% appreciation in the past two and a half years, that's mind boggling. So uh, can it sustain itself? That remains to be seen. Uh, it's, not, it's not a healthy market. This kind of double and triple digit appreciation is simply not a healthy market. That's why the Fed uh, has raised interest rate to, uh, to slow down the economy and to, uh, to try to uh, make the business market as balanced as possible, make it healthy. Uh, so. In fact, it's a kind of a good thing that the Fed, Federal Reserve, they should have uh, increased the interest rate way before this year. Now we're having a lot of challenges with the uh, uh, home of home affordability. A lot of people being priced out of the market, and uh, the five to six percent interest rate has uh, caused people to uh, go back to the sidelines and not be able to afford. The price of a home, especially in the very, very lucrative, very desirable, very expensive San Diego market, which is the median price is, you know, is reaching $1 million, which is mind boggling. All right, so uh, the next metric I want to uh, share with you is the, uh, the active listings, right? Active listings determines how many sellers are putting the home in the market as a, as a, at this moment? But this year compared to year over year last year and the year before. So after listing is 5,308, which is 10% higher, more after listing than, than a year ago, August, 2021. And all right, so Keep this number in mind after listing is 5,300. 5, now, the next metric we need to know is what is the medium sales price? No, what's the, actually, hold on. What's the new listing medium price, right? So the ultimate is after you list the price, the home go through the transaction phase and then the actual offer price and the acceptance price closing the rest grow. As of right now, the uh, the medium new listing price right now is 827,000, an increase of 10% uh, year over year. So we're still seeing almost double digit appreciation year over year from 2021. So that's a good sign. Uh, so, at the peak right now is like a couple of months ago, April to May, the peak medium new listing price was 880. However, because of a uh, higher interest rate, the, the payments are higher, less people are able to afford the price that they want. So 
those people that do qualify, that do pull the trigger and they are able to close escrow, they qualify for a lower price home. It does not mean that the home has reduced in prices, all right? Now, having said that, you know, the demand has decreased accordingly, as we all know. And so the question is, what's the potential price drop? Now, this graph, do not be, do not freak out about this almost vertical trend line uh, because the percent of active listing with price drops or 10%, that means uh, a couple of months prior to this August, sellers, they always try to uh, inflate their list price, hoping the few buyers gonna make a bid on it. So as a result, we're not seeing the multiple offers that we're seeing in this market uh, last year or even much earlier this year. Because of that, because of a uh, lack of competition in the market and the homes are being overpriced as it is relative to the demand, uh, the seller have to reduce their list price one or maybe two times. So again, this is a trend that we need to monitor in the next few months for the rest of this year. Hopefully the seller eventually understand that the market has changed. They need to list their price according to the fair market value and not what they think the price they're gonna get. However, if the homes that they are trying to sell are not good condition and they overprice their house, it's gonna, it's gonna stay in the market for a while. So they are forced to lower their price to meet the market buyer's demand, all right? So do not be concerned about this vertical trend line on the uh, people pricing their homes above the, the demand that exists in the marketplace. All right, so the next thing we need to understand is the new listing median price, right? From the initial after listing. So again, 827,000, so a little bit lower than a few months ago, which is understandable. Uh, so, not a problem. And then let's look at the pending sale. So pending sale is at 520 homes, pending closing escrow. Uh, here's the concern is, is a 36% less pending sales the same time last year in August, 2021. So because in August, 2021, pending sales are 644 and 2020 and 2019, there were more pending sales. So clearly the demand is not as great. So therefore there are less homes being sold. And therefore it appears that the, uh, you know, the, the, the supply of inventory is, is still very, very low. So right now we're still seeing the, uh, the imbalance of the market still are very much a seller's market. As a matter of fact, if you can look over to the month of supply, four to six months is a normal market for, for supply and demand. Now, let's look at here. I'm sorry, wrong graph. Let's look at month, I oh know. Let's look at, uh, again, a month of supply. Months of supply is 10 months, 10.8. So four months equal one month, four weeks equal one month divided into 10 weeks of supply. So we're talking in the San Diego market as of August, 2022, there are only 2.5 months of available inventory. So would you agree with me that the inventory is based on this data is very limited. So we are still a historical low supply of inventory in the San Diego market relative to the demand, albeit decreased demand. So uh, that's what we see. So when, when, when demand exceeds supply of inventory, housing prices will increase. Uh, 
expert predict there's a single digit increase in appreciation uh, for the next 12 months, 2022 to 2023. But then anything can happen. No one can predict the future. But uh, all right, so that's what you're seeing right now. And let me see what else I need to do. Days to close. I mean, okay, no. Let's try medium days on the market before the closing let's go. Medium days, 21 days. Medium days on the market is, that tells me when an offer, that tells me that if a, if a seller's listing price is listed correctly, uh, in relationship consistent with the demand, then and it's good and the house is good condition, it'll it'll sell quick. So 21 days with about three weeks. Uh, three weeks this listing is on the market, it, it are under contract. So that's very quick, right? So it tells me the market is still very competitive for each house. Uh, that on the average, they may be one, two, or three offers per house. So still a very, very good market, still very competitive. So the next question is, you have to ask yourself is, from the list price that was approved, meaning that the seller approved the buyer's offer, what is the average sale to list price ratio? This is important, right? So let me explain it quickly. So as of right now, the list price it pretty much equals the offering price. So at, at one, right? So there are nobody's overbidding above the list price and nobody is getting any kind of discount based on the list price, final list price. Again, based on the higher interest rate of five to six percent. Now, before the interest rate took a dramatic uptick back in April, it was uh, very much a uh, frenzy market, like a multiple offer, five to 10 offers per house a mere few months ago at probably 3.5 interest rate, right? We've seen multiple offers. So therefore, as you can see, 0 0.102. So therefore the homes are, sell, are selling at above this price uh, based on the uh, bidding and the competition at that time. So things have changed dramatically, obviously. We all know that. So uh, it remains to be seen for the remainder of this year, how, what, where this graph trending will appear. So if it's coming back to normal, it might be like this level. If, if this trend keep on going down, that means the actual sales price is below the final list price from the seller. Does that make sense? So it remains to be seen. And let me see what else. I think I cover all the important metrics. Uh, active listings. Okay, I mentioned new, right? I, I did mention new listings, right? Or maybe not. All right, let's go over the new listings. Oh, no, never mind, never mind. I uh, I exited San Diego. Anyway, uh, that's, I think that's uh, that's pretty much I have to say. Uh, so I don't need to go any further. I think I cover all the important metrics. So the takeaway, the high level takeaway for me is the San Diego market, although has uh, has cooled down just like many other markets, we have not seen any dramatic actual decrease in prices. I mean, you look at the, all these graphs, it's too early to say how much of the actual value of homes has decreased. All we saw was a price drop from the initial over the top too high of a list price by the seller. Because the seller are in a panic mode, right? Or maybe uh, they, 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 they're asking too much based on the, <laughs> the past 18 months of uh, amazing record-breaking, skyrocketing record prices. They think they can get a lot more price based on the recent closings, but uh, this market has flipped because of the interest rate. So the market is very interest rate sensitive. So five to 6% right now 
the interest rate is, is not outrageous. If you compare historically speaking, it's still a low interest rate. Those 20 years ago, the interest rate, mortgage rate were around five to five and a half percent. And 30 years ago, it was like eight to nine percent. And back in the 80s, at one point, 1980s, some of you does not go back that far. Maybe your parents may have experienced that back in the 80s, at one point, the mortgage interest rate, interest rate were a whopping 18%, right? So I wouldn't think that well of you. All that negative headlines out there, people predicting, you know, the especially the YouTube the YouTube videos out there, they are getting the click click uh, click baits, if you will. They are showing YouTube uh, <laughs> that the market is gonna crash 30, 40, 50 percent, some outrageous inaccurate information just so they can uh, get more views and subscription. But San Diego wise, the relative to what's going on, it's still a very, we, we have not seen any red flags, still a lot of demand out there. As long as the interest rate stays around five to five and a half percent, you know, the market will run along in a kind of a balanced situation for the rest of this year. And, but if the interest rate goes up beyond 6%, then we may see some, some slight correction, slight actual dec declines. But it, it, there may be some declines already, maybe in the higher end. The, uh, the luxury market, for example, 1.5 to 2 million price range, you may see 5 to 10, 10 months reduction in prices because the, the buyer's pool is very limited at the high end. But when we're talking entry level San Diego prices, we're talking entry level, what's entry level? Like 700 to a million, we call that entry level, right? Those, those homes are very, very competitive. So supply of homes are still very limited. Uh, as we mentioned, two and a half months supply, extremely uh, still a seller's market, still bidding war a little here and there, depending on what neighborhood. So uh, there you go. So. Uh, I'm bullish on the San Diego market, very desirable, obviously. Uh, everybody in the world wants to live in San Diego, even, even more so than LA and Orange County uh, to a lot of people. San Diego is, a, in, in my opinion, I lived in San Francisco Bay Area for the past 32 years, but I would love to uh, <laughs> spend some time in San Diego, either buy a vacation home or a multiplex rental property you know, live in one unit and rent out the other three, I, I still might do that. So because I love San Diego, it's not as hectic as in Orange County or, or LA, <laughs> in my opinion, right? So at the, at the end of the day, if you qualify, even with a higher interest rate right now, if you have a down payment, if you have a job longevity, if you have good cash reserve, if it, it's the right time in your life, to buy a home to live here in San Diego County, by all means do so, knowing I, I suggest you would not want to time the market. You buy and hold for the long term, live there for at least seven to 10 years. You can overcome any type of uh, short term volatility that's going on in San Diego or for that matter, any market in the country. Because over the long term, real estate will always make people money, right? So don't time the market, use time in the market, not timing the market. Does it make sense? So I will come back in a few months, maybe the third quarter or the fourth quarter of this year. I will go back to this Redfin weekly housing market data and look at the uh, what how the trends were, uh, that transpires. No one can predict the, predict the future, but I will revisit this market for those of you that want me to do so and uh, give you my uh, perspective and analysis why? Because I know all the nationwide market from a high level. I've been doing this for a long, long time, 20 something years, helping those investors to buy in many markets in the country over many years. And I'm somewhat familiar uh, in, in the Southern California market, been to Southern California many, many times over the years, hundreds of times. All right. So that's all I have to say. Hopefully, you got a lot of value from this. Uh, video presentation, feel free to subscribe to my channel so you can watch 
each each week different market I'm gonna analyze based on this uh, real time Redfin weekly housing market data, and hopefully as a home buyer, you can make an informed decision. Uh, upon you do research, whether you wanna purchase in this market, and for real estate investors, it's kind of hard to buy a single family home as a rental property in San Diego because the rent will never cover your debt service, your, your monthly expenses, unless you put 50% down payment or 70% down payment, then you make cash flow. But uh, you can't cash flow in single family home at 25% down payment. The number does not work. It has really never worked. That's why many, many Californians, they realize that. So if they want to buy investment property, they have to go out of state obviously, right? They, they have to go to Idaho, Phoenix, Arizona, or Las Vegas, or out to Texas or out to Florida. So they can go out buy affordable rental properties that they can achieve pretty significant cash flow. Assuming you go to the right market in which we have connections, my organizations have networking with turnkey providers in many great markets like Texas and Florida, Alabama, North Carolina, and, and in the Midwest with very high cash flow at 25% down payment, low price point, below, typically below $350,000 single family home, renting at least for 2,200. So that metrics, that rental value make metrics makes sense to for other city investors. All right, thank you so much for listening. My name is Yi Wing Yi from the Yi Realist Network. Have a nice day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.